Hey there, folks, and welcome back. One of the most challenging aspects in working with triple integrals is in understanding the connection between the bounds of the integrals and the 3D domain of integration. It can be tough to take a set of integrals whose bounds are provided and draw out that 3D domain. It can also be tough to start with a 3D domain and set up the bounds of your integral in a particular order. These are extremely important skills though, so we're going to get some practice in the following example. Here, we're sketching the 3D region over which this triple integral is defined. We're given the bounds and we're going to draw the domain of integration. We'll then use our 3D sketch to rewrite this triple integral, but in a different order. Instead of dz dy dx, we'll write it in the form dx dy dz, and then in the form dy dz dx. Okay, so once again, we have our triple integral, and we have to find a way to turn these bounds into a 3D picture of our domain of integration. Well, right now, there are just too many variables at play. We have z bounded between these two quantities, y bounded between these two quantities, x bounded between these two quantities. It's just too much to think about all at once. So what I like to do is consider the outer two integrals first. We're going to ignore this innermost one and just consider these two integrals here. This outer integral is telling me that x is bounded between 0 and 1, right? And the second integral is telling me that y is bounded between root x and 1. These two sets of inequalities are telling me what my 3D domain would look like if I just ignored this z variable. If I took my 3D picture and I smushed it down into the xy plane, it could be described by these two sets of inequalities. So let's start by sketching that 2D projection. Here we can see that x is going from 0 to 1, right? So in my 2D plane, I see x is going from 0 to 1, and y is going from root x to 1. Well, root x looks something like this, y equals root x, and y equals 1 is somewhere up here. Ah, if root x is the lower bound and 1 is the upper bound, then this is going to be our region. This is what our domain looks like when we project it down. By translating this picture into our xy plane in R3, you can see here we have the curve y equals root x, here we have the curve y equals 1, and here is our shaded region, the domain of integration when we project it down into the xy plane. What this is telling us is that this is where all the action takes place. Whatever our z values are doing, and we're going to get that from our inner integral in a moment, it has to occur above or below this curved region in the xy plane. We're not going to get any part of our region over here. Everything is going to occur over on this part. So what is z doing? Well, from our inner integral, we see that z is going from 0 to 1 minus y. Well, what are these two surfaces, z equals 0 and z equals 1 minus y in R3? z equals 0, well, that's the xy plane. It consists of all points with a height of 0. What about z equals 1 minus y? Well, if we think about just the yz plane, this plane here, then z equals 1 minus y describes a line with z intercept equal to 1 and a slope of minus 1. So it describes this line here. But what's x doing? We don't have any x's in this equation, which means no matter where we look along the x-axis, this line is going to appear exactly the same. So for example, if I draw this same line again over here, you can see that this is going to give me an entire plane in R3. And z is going from this lower plane, the xy plane, all the way up to this pink plane, z equals 1 minus y. Well, folks, this is enough to visualize our domain of integration. z is going from the xy plane up to the pink plane, but only over this yellow region here, right? This is where the action takes place. So if I restrict my attention to just this yellow region, you can see that this curved triangular region is our domain of integration. Okay, I've cleaned up our picture of the domain of integration, and now we're ready to move on to the second half of this example. Initially, we started with a triple integral of the form dz dy dx, but now we want to change the order. We want to rebuild our triple integral in the order dx dy dz. So we're going to end up with something that looks like this, an integral of f of x, y, z 
first with respect to x, then an integral with respect to y, and finally on the outside, an integral with respect to z. We just have to figure out these bounds. And to do that, we're essentially gonna perform the process from the last slide in reverse. On the last slide, we started with the outer integrals and worked our way in. Now we're gonna do the opposite. We find the bounds for our inner integral and work our way back out. So looking at our inner integral, we see that it's written with respect to x, right? To figure out its bounds, which might depend on y or z, we have to take a close look at our 3D region. We have to ask ourselves, as we move throughout our region, how far can we move in the direction of the negative x-axis, and how far can we move in the direction of the positive x-axis? Those are going to be our lower and upper bounds of the integral. I like to imagine a little arrow being shot through our region in the direction of the positive x-axis. The first surface that the arrow hits is going to be our lower bound, and the last surface that the arrow hits is going to be our upper bound. So here you can see that if we shoot an arrow through the region, it's going to first hit this triangular region on the yz plane, right, where x is equal to 0. So 0 is going to be our lower bound for x. As the arrow leaves our region, it's going to pass through this curved face here, which you might remember from the last slide is given by the equation y equals root x. This is our upper bound, but of course, we can't leave it in this form. Since we're integrating with respect to x, we shouldn't have an x in our bounds. We're going to have to rewrite this. So we'll rewrite this simply as x equals y squared, and our upper bound is y squared. That takes care of x. We don't care about x anymore. So what we're going to do to figure out the bounds on our y and z integrals is we're going to take this 3D region and we're going to ignore the x's. We're going to project it down into the yz plane, this plane right here. What you'll see is this right triangular face, which maybe I'll graph for you over here. Here's our right triangular face, which we get by projecting onto the yz plane. And this line up here, you might remember, is given by z equals 1 minus y. We can now use this two-dimensional projection to get our bounds for the remaining integrals. If I didn't tell you the order, you could do this either first with respect to y and then z, or first with respect to z and then y. This region is both type 1 and type 2. But here I've actually told you I want you to do y first. So let's see. y here is bounded between this line, y equals 0, and this line, which I can rewrite as y equals 1 minus z. So my lower bound on the y integral is 0, and my upper bound is 1 minus z. And finally, my z is going to be going from 0 all the way up to 1. It's bounded between these constants. So I have bounds of 0 and 1, and there you have it, folks. We've rewritten this triple integral in the form dx, dy, dz. Let's try this again with another order. Okay, let's try this one more time, but with a new ordering. Now we want a triple integral of the form dy, dz, dx. I've written that triple integral down for you here, and I've included the 3D sketch of our domain of integration. To figure out the bounds on our inner integral, which now is written with respect to y, we have to imagine shooting a little arrow through our solid, moving in the direction of the positive y-axis. The first surface that it passes through is going to be our lower bound, and the last surface that it passes through is going to be our upper bound. So we can see here that it's first going to pass through this curved face, right? Which we saw before is given by y equals root x. We don't need to rewrite it this time. We already have y as a function of x. So y equals root x is our lower bound. Our upper bound is given by this surface here, where our arrow exits the region. This is our flat plane z equals 1 minus y, which we could equivalently write as y equals 1 minus z. That's going to be our upper bound. y is going from root x all the way up to 1 minus z. Okay, we're done with y. To figure out what's happening with x and z, we project our 3D region down onto the xz plane. We want to completely ignore the y's. When we do this, what we're going to see is this curved line projected onto the xy plane. It's going to look something like this. There is our projected region. And I'm going to draw this for you over here. Here's our xz plane. Here's our positive x-axis, which is now pointing this way. So our curve is actually going to look something like this. It's going to go from x equals 1 all the way up to z equals 1 over here. But in order to write down the bounds, we're actually going to need to know the equation of this curve. 
How do we find it? Well, notice that this curved line here, which is going to be the curved line we see in the xz plane, is really what we get when we intersect our curved face and our flat plane. Well, the curved face is y equals root x, and the flat plane is z equals 1 minus y. So if I replace this y with root x, I get z equals 1 minus root x. That's this line right here. At this point, folks, it's just cleanup. I want to integrate over this region, first with respect to z, then with respect to x. I see that z is going from z equals 0 all the way up to this curved line, z equals 1 minus root x. So these are the bounds on my second integral, 0 to 1 minus root x. All the while, x is going between 0 and 1. So my final bounds are 0 and 1, and again, we've successfully converted our integral.